Good morning. It's Tuesday morning. Welcome to Tuesday morning 10 minute Bible. Today we're going to talk about a little bit about why churches are meeting in a pandemic where we know people are dying, where we know people, if they gather together, the, it increases exponentially the chance of them dying or becoming sick from this COVID-19 virus. Well, some churches use these, these verses from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. And those are good verses. It, it does tell us to meet together. Now for us, we meet together online. Other churches have drive-in church in their parking lots, but there are some churches that feel the only way is to meet in person together and worship together. Another passage why some churches are meeting is found in Mark's Gospel. Now there's some disagreement around these verses, but I'm just going to read them and not comment on why some people disagree. It's probably good for another study or perhaps even a sermon. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 16 through 20. It says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes. If they should drink anything deadly, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will get well. So the Lord Jesus, after speaking to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at, at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the accompanying signs. Well, in verse 18 of Mark's gospel, it says this, they will pick up snakes. If they should drink anything deadly, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. That's a pretty, pretty good promise. That's how come you know, some churches have snake handling services and pick them up. They, they get that from this verse. Uh, me personally, uh, the only way I'm coming face to face with a snake is, is accidentally or at the zoo if it's behind glass. And uh, where I grew up younger, uh, my mother was, was deathly afraid of snakes. And the area that we lived in, snakes showed up quite often. I don't know if they were, were poisonous or not, uh, but my, my mother definitely did not stick around to find out, and uh, my father would get the hoe. And, uh, but anyways, the, 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 the fear of snakes just sort of uh, rubbed off on me, and, and probably, probably rightly so, but probably a little bit more than it should have been. If the, if the Bible says and God says, well, you're going to be protected from snakes, then you are. But I don't think at the same time you should be out picking them up and, you know, eyeball to eyeball. That's probably not a good thing. It's probably not a safe thing. But that's, that's how some churches believe. Well, Mark's gospel 
brings to mind a passage from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 19. And this is part of the verse where Jesus sent out and sent out and gave 72 of his disciples the authority to tread or walk or trample, depending on the translation you read, snakes, snakes and scorpions. And they had power over all the power of the enemy, Satan and the fallen angels. Luke chapter 10, verse 19 says this exactly. Look, I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing at all will harm you. Nothing at all will harm you. So, you know, even though we're in the midst of this, this virus, we have this promise of God that nothing will, will harm us. So with Mark's gospel in verse 18 and Luke's gospel, verse 10 in mind, well, some, some people refer over to Acts chapter 28, verses 4 and 5. And it says, when the local people saw the snake hanging from his hand, Paul had bit, had bit he was out picking up firewood, and he's bitten by a snake, a poisonous snake. <laughs> he picks it up and it's hanging off his hand. I shouldn't laugh. That's not funny. But he's got this snake hanging off his hand. And the local people said, and he had just been, they had just been saved from a shipwreck and swam ashore to this island. And it says, this man no doubt is a murderer. Even though he escaped the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. But he shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no harm. And so when you read those passages and you believe them, you know, even though the worst virus that we've seen in a hundred years is devastating the world, the Bible is telling us a different story. And each church, each pastor must make up their mind how to respond and how to address worship. Now, would it be better for a church to find an alternative rather than meeting in person? Yes. The Bible gives us these promises. It gives us, it gives believers hope. It gives us things that the world doesn't know and cannot see. So some churches are meeting together, even though some of the pastors that that originally started this have, have gotten sick from the virus and died. But they are in heaven. So they have gained because they have the promises of the Bible. Now, recently there's been authorities overreaching, misusing their, their authority, which is really strange. You know, liquor stores can be open, but Churches have to be closed. Kind of something wrong with this picture. A, a church down in Kentucky continues to meet, and the governor sent out the state police to put notices on each car. I mean, talk about a waste of money. Government will waste money to, to push their authority. They printed up special notices to put on each car, and then the state police recorded the license plate of each worshiper in a church parking lot. And then somebody dumped nails at each of the entrance of the church to try and flatten people's tires. In Mississippi, a, a mayor issued summonses to church worshipers, most of whom are elderly, and they don't have smartphones, they don't have the internet, they don't have any other means to, to, to meet together, to watch a church service online, except meet in person. So that's what they did. The mayor of Louisville, Kentucky, issued an order that there were to be no drive-in churches. Fortunately, the churches went to court and the judge overturned it. The same thing happened in Kansas, but in one county, the judge didn't overturn it, so they could not meet. For the rest of the state, the, the, the state lawmakers met and overturned the judge's order so churches could still meet 
drive-in or, or however they wish to meet. Most of them were doing the drive-in meeting or online meeting. And there's been other forms of government overreach. If there was a father playing t-ball with his daughter in the park, just him, his daughter, he got arrested. There was a, a guy on the bus which wasn't wearing a mask. It took 10 cops, 10 police officers to drag him, literally drag him off the bus. In Ohio, you can buy drinks with your takeout meals, <laughs> but don't dare go to church. Again, something wrong with this picture. The Constitution allows religious freedoms. Why not let the churches decide how and when and why to meet? You know, 260 million Christians around the world face persecution. And that's up 6% from last year. In North Korea, if you are caught as a Christian, you are either sent immediately to a forced labor camp or they kill you right on the spot. We've all seen pictures on the news of Christians lined up on the beach and other places and they're beheaded for simply being a Christian. I've never seen churches face so much criticism when, when many of them are helping people in this crisis. Churches need to pray like never before. And I think our elected leaders need to be careful before they go too far. Well, there's another verse in the Bible that talks about protection. Psalm, Psalm 91 from verses 7 to 12 talks very much about the protection that God offers his believers. But let me start by comparison a, a few translations of Psalm 91 verse 10. It says, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent. In the New International Version. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague shall come near your tent. The English Standard Version. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. The Christian Standard Version. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. The New King James Version. And then no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. The New Living Translation. And these translations are very similar. They use the same three sets of words. Evil or harm, plague or disaster, and tent, home, or dwelling. God gave us a mind to think. He gave us wisdom, but most of all, he gives us his promise of protection. So if a church decides to meet, pray for them. If a church doesn't meet except for, for in their parking lot or online, pray for them. And pray for our elected leaders. Now, I'll leave you with these, word, these verses from Romans. Paul wrote them originally for people who were eating meat that was sacrificed to idols. In other words, they, they would take meat, sacrifice it to the idols, and uh, these were frugal people, so they'd take that meat that was left over and take it to the meat market and sell it. Hey, you know, why not, why not get some use out of it? Well, there was a controversy because the believer, some believers thought that was wrong, and others thought, well, they're just idols, it doesn't really matter. And it caused a little bit of a controversy, so Paul addressed it. And while we're not talking about meat being sacrificed to idols, there's a principle here for us, you know, 
we're not talking about food, but there is a principle here for us to live that we can use as a guideline. And Romans chapter 14, verses 21 and 22 says this, It is a good thing not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that makes your brother or sister stumble. Whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. Now, when you're watching this video, down in the description, I'm going to post some verses to look up and to read about God watching over us. So have a great day, and remember, God has got this.